We have a favourite saying on Fully Charged that was coined by the science fiction author William Gibson. The future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. Now, the quickest way to convince the world that change is coming is to show them that it's already here. Now, it's our privilege on Fully Charged to be able to share stories of those countries that are leading the way when it comes to clean energy and electric vehicles. When it comes to the energy transition, what's going on in leading countries like Norway and Scotland, China and South Korea needs to be broadcast around the rest of the world. To harness that positive energy, we're inviting the leading countries and specifically cities to enter our fully charged cities initiative in the coming months so we can share those successes. There's more on this towards the end of this episode, but we wanted to show you one such city that is showing just what is possible, and it really is remarkable. Now, while certain European cities are still trailing a handful of electric buses here, half a dozen there, some electric taxis there, China has more than 400,000. Shenzhen is the shining example of how to electrify land-based public transport and we sent our correspondent Elliot Richards to report on how they are blazing a trail. You may have read a few years ago about a little news story around a city in the south of China which changed its diesel bus fleet to electric in one day. 16,000 buses. So how do you charge 16,000 buses overnight? Well, we're on the way to find out to the city of Shenzhen. This is a bullet train with beds. We're on our way to Shenzhen and you're watching The Fully Charged Show. And we're here in Shenzhen, home to around 12 million people. And ever since 1980, when this was designated a special economic zone, it has boomed, as you can see behind me. And we're gonna see what the home of BYD can offer in terms of electric infrastructure. This is a city that's fully on electric. And let's go and have a look at how they're doing that. So I'm here in the central hub of Shenzhen Bus Company at their intelligent center. Now this is where they have all of the live data from all of the buses and all of the taxis that are driving around Shenzhen now. And I think you'll agree that this is incredibly impressive. So all of these little dots you see here are actual buses on their routes right now and they're being tracked across the whole city. And I just want to show you some of the stats um, that they have up on the screen here. Now they do have some things like um, punctuality, income and things like that. That's all being tracked and monitored uh, on a daily basis. Now I want to just point out a few of the facts and figures here. So currently Shenzhen Bus Company have about 6,000 of the buses on the Shenzhen routes. There's 16,000 in total shared between three bus companies. So these guys have about 6,000 electric buses. They also have 181 depots, all with chargers uh, available to do the daytime charging or the nighttime charging, which is actually more common. Um, and then they have nearly 2,000 chargers. So those are individual charging piles for the buses to charge up. And then this is an incredible statistic, okay? Just over 1 million miles per day are driven uh, by all of the combined buses. Now, just think of how much diesel pollution that would have been putting out previously a million kilometers per day in this city. It doesn't even bear worth you know, thinking about. 
but now it's all EV, so it's a lot cleaner. And then the final one is just a daily ridership of around just over 1,100,000 uh, riders. Well, the whole electrification process started in 2008. We started with uh, some hybrid buses first, and then in 2011, uh, Sun held the University Games, and then we introduced the first fully electric bus route, and that was with 100 buses. By 2017, we actually purchased about uh, another 5,000 buses, and we became fully electric in, in 2017 with uh, 6,000 buses. With the taxi, we started uh, the whole electrification process also back in 2010. We started with a, setting up a joint venture company with BYD uh, initially, and then gradually we trans uh, transformed our whole uh, entire fleet to electric also. And by 2018, uh, our en entire, electric, uh, entire taxi fleet became electric uh, with about 5,000 buses. So all, all in all, we have 6,000 electric buses and 5,000 electric taxis. So we're here at one of the smaller depots here in Shenzhen. Now this fits around about 20 buses in it. Um, at the moment, none of them are charging because it's daytime, electricity is very expensive, and they leave all of the charging to nighttime when it's a lot cheaper. Now the buses do um, uh, around 50% of their battery before they come in and, um, and recharge. Now, these are mostly BYD buses, um, and the chargers here are 150 kilowatt hour bus uh, chargers. Um, interestingly, um, the drivers can't charge the buses themselves. They have to use an outsourced company to do it for them um, in terms of health and safety and regulations. So very interesting difference there. Um, and the other thing is that to charge a, a bus which has around about 250 kilowatt hour battery costs around about 300 RMB to charge a bus full. Now, this is very different from the depots um, in the UK and Europe, smelly, stinky diesel places. I mean, very flash looking buildings here. And just in front is the new double decker bus they have. This bus has a range of almost 250 kilometers and has a battery capacity of I think 330 kilowatt hours. So huge battery and fairly decent range. Unfortunately, I can't drive this. I don't have a bus license, but let's go and jump into the driving seat and see what it's like to, to sit in a bus driving seat. Well, I've never done that before. So come on in. Whoa, uh, that's a very comfortable seat. Um, and in here, yeah, I've got all of my battery range down here. I've got my camera view. It's very similar to a, a BYD car actually, which is not surprising. Um, but I can see all of the views out the, the side. I can see how many volts my battery's doing, uh, how much capacity is left. Yeah, it's a, a great place to be at, but I wouldn't want to drive it, it's too big. Buying the buses is easy. Yeah, you need a deep pocket. Building the infrastructure is, is, is another thing. You know, like it's, it's not just the infrastructure, it's also because we have to replan all the routes because the, the nature of an electric bus is very different to, to, to a diesel bus. You know, you, you really have to make sure that you have charging infrastructure at both ends of, of, of a particular route. And so we, we need to make sure that uh, for each bus, we by the time they get back to the depot, there is a free available, you know, a charging point for them. And so we we've had to virtually had to re replan all our routings and uh, the, the depot uh, the depot uh, facilities. Uh, we have a hundred. We have quite a lot, lot large number of depots in, in Shenzhen for, for for our operation. We've altogether 180 depots with about 1,700 uh, 1, charges. So we for each uh, bus there there is a designated point for them to go and charge. So building up the infrastructure is a very, very daunting task, particularly in a very short period between 2015 and 17, when within that two year, we've virtually had to go and look for new depots and you know, put in all the infrastructure and charging facilities. Electric buses have their advantages. First of all, they have zero emissions and no pollution. The second one is low noise. The third one is that they are easy to operate. We actually save effort. 
Shifting diesel bus gears used to be very tricky, and once my hand was strained. Electric vehicles are very labour saving, and I won't strain my hand. It saves us from a lot of extra work. Now on this screen we're seeing something slightly different. Again we're seeing the live buses being tracked across the city. But this is showing the ones which are in operation, charging or under maintenance. Um, blue means they're in operation and uh, as you can see that's 99.9% .9 of the buses here. Now it's very difficult to actually find the buses that are charging. I can just about see there's maybe one bus here, one bus here, one bus here across a fleet of 6,000. There's three buses, three or four buses charging at the moment. And then in terms of maintenance, those are the red dots. And I can see one, two, three. There's three buses out of 6,000 which are, uh, are not working at the moment. Now, that's important because if we look at the start up here, the utilization rate is about 99.7%. Now with a diesel bus, um, they, there weren't statistics on this, but I've been told it's around you know, 90 to 95% uh, vehicle utilization rate. So actually being on the road, not being maintained and not being broken down. So that's incredible. Now, one last thing is we've actually clicked on this particular bus here. And once we clicked on the bus here, it brings up some live statistics about that bus. And this is the bus, it's the number 218. Um, and it's a BYD K8 model. Um, and it's telling us <coughs> about the battery capacity, passenger capacity, um, and just how many kilometers it's done in total. Plus, um, you know, when it's had its maintenance and its energy efficiency. So I can click on any one of these buses and get all of this information all in one place. And this is just the buses. We haven't even started on the taxis yet. We're at the taxi depot here in Shenzhen. Um, it's towards the end of the day now and the taxi drivers are here charging their cars for the night shift. Now this has uh, 88 car parking spots for the drivers, but more than that, this actually has uh, a place for massages, uh, restaurants, a place for training and basic maintenance. So a taxi driver can come here and do everything and in the hour, hour and a half they're waiting to charge their car, they can just spend their time in there. Now we're on to the taxi fleet and again we're inundated with facts. So two facts I want to point out here. This is the number of total kilometres that taxis have driven today, so over half a million kilometres just today. And that's over about 39,000 trips so far today and it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. Incredible numbers. The other thing I want to show you, obviously you've got the interactive map here which we can see all the taxis. Green means, um, green means there's someone in there, red means there's no one in there, or the other way around, I can't remember. Um, but in terms of safety, um, all of the taxis in Shenzhen have cameras in them, um, and this data can all be tracked back to here. So you can actually see live data from the cameras inside the car, so out the window and within the taxi. So something very different from the US and Europe, but it keeps and ensures the safety of the vehicle's occupants here in China. We're the largest operator in Shenzhen and we run around 5,000 taxis. And uh, after we started running such a large scale of taxi fleet, we started thinking how do we optimize the charging and how do we, when we're rerouting all of these infrastructure building, how do we improve um, the working condition and also the living quality for all our drivers uh, with buses and taxis as well. So we uh, built a new comprehensive depot here uh, where we are here in Sili in Shenzhen. So here you can see uh, typically when our drivers come in every day, they spend around two hours to charge their taxis. And when, we, when they are getting a top up for the taxis, uh, what do, how can they make use of this time? So we built a cafe, a dining area here, and we also have a small gym. And uh, over there you can actually see uh, Ping An. We worked with them to build a online check-in, health uh, check-in and medicine counter over here where you can just scan your QR code 
and get um, your health check and exams here as well. But most importantly, for charging, uh, our uh, drivers can typically book, uh, pre-book a charging seat over here, and then once they arrive, they can scan the QR code, pay with their phone with Alipay or WeChat, and then uh, they can leave their taxis here, and they can, will be able to see the SOE, uh, SOCs uh, here on the screen uh, while they do uh, finish other activities. After upgrading to the electric car, the main thing we feel is that the electric car is more convenient to use. My previous petrol car had a clutch, it is mechanical and takes a little more effort to shift gears. And when we drive this electric car, it is automatic. It has forward gears, reverse gears and parking gear. It's a little more worry-free and labour saving than when we were driving a petrol car. This is in terms of operation. Besides, petrol cars need to be refuelled. The cost of refuelling is a bit higher. Electric car use only electricity. Now many charging stations have been built in many places in Shenzhen. It is very convenient, especially for our taxi driver rest stop, like this one, which is large. The service station integrates charging, eating, exercise and fitness. Sometimes the driver can come over to recharge, rest and exercise. The next step, um, the government and also private enterprises are going to electrify uh, utility uh, vehicles such as, you know, garbage trucks, uh, water plants, uh, uh, water trucks, and um, and all of the road uh, construction trucks as well. So this, uh, with the infrastructure that we have in place, that more hopefully more private car owners are able to purchase uh, EVs so that without having to fret about where to charge their cars. And I think uh, all of us uh, citizens here are really enjoying a better quality of environment, uh, air quality that clean energy brings. The future, you know, I, I, I see for, for, for Shenzhen certainly that we're, we're shifting towards uh, encouraging people to use public transportation more. And I think it's the same for, for, for many cities in, around the world. So thank you very much for watching today. We tried something a little bit different. Let us know in the comments what you think about more episodes like this from China. If you haven't done already, uh, we've got our YouTube memberships, our Patreon links, and our subscribe button below. And if you have been, thank you for watching. With more and more cities like Shenzhen taking action and setting new standards, we wanted to shine a spotlight on the forward-thinking initiatives taking place around the world. And not just the well-known leaders like Shenzhen, Amsterdam and Oslo, but the countless others across the world where cities are working hard to create a better future. From the purposely designed and built Sustainable City by Diamond Developers. Now this is a, a residential and mixed use development we went to see in Dubai. Covering 46 hectares, the development applies sustainability principles to achieve social, economic and environmental outcomes. Completed in 2016, phase one of the development has become an international case study for sustainable living. To the city that boasts the title of the sunniest city in Scotland, Dundee. Now in Dundee, the switch to electric vehicles has now seen the council travel over 5.6 million miles on pure electric, making a significant impact on both the air quality in the city and the carbon impact of the council's transport, saving an estimated 250,000 tonnes of CO2. In the United States, the Californian city of Lancaster became the first in America to announce a clear net zero energy vision back in 2010.
Now, they set themselves a goal of producing more renewable energy within the city limits than the entire city consumed by the year 2020. As of August the 1st, 2020, there was approximately 693 megawatts of renewable energy generated and procured within the city limits, amounting to 130% of the city's total energy consumption. Lancaster was also home to the first solar thermal power plant in the US in 2009 and in 2013 became the first US city requiring solar to be installed in every new home. As one of only two local governments in Australia to build and operate solar farms, the city of Newcastle has developed a 5 megawatt solar farm on one of the closed landfills at the Summerhill Waste Management Centre, which continues to manage waste and resource recovery across the region. The project site was formerly a coal mine and then later used for landfilling before construction of the solar farm demonstrating a powerful symbol of reuse and transition and the opportunities for urban solar farms on reclaimed land. This is just a snippet of some of the initiatives and great things that are taking place and we want to hear about more. Fully Charged Cities is open to all, so if you want to see your cities or others recognised in 2021, head to the Fully Charged website to find out more. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.